Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my December film wrap up and just general what I've been watching because I'm going to include a few kind of uh, short dramas from BBC and just some regular TV shows. So I'm going to start with the first thing I watched. So the very first film I saw in December was Victor Frankenstein. I've already got a review on this as well as a spoiler discussion review on my joint channel with Joe. So I'll link both of those down below if you're interested in seeing. But Essentially, it is another retake on the Frankenstein story as we're following um, from Igor's perspective, his um, assistant who wasn't in the original Mary Shelley book. I thought it was pretty great. I can easily say it was one of the best films of 2015, um, but I've seen quite a few reviews since I saw it and not everybody feels that way. Um, so again, links to my reviews are down below. I then watched Michael McIntyre, Hello Wembley at my um, friend's dorm room. Uh, I think we were supposed to be revising and then she put that on so I watched it. I gave that a 5 out of 5 stars. It was hilarious. I don't usually watch a lot of comedy stuff but Michael McIntyre's stand up is amazing. I need to watch everything that he's ever done. I need to go to his shows. I love it. I think he's hilarious. I just wish it was a longer video. Okay, then the third film that I watched was The Polar Express with Tom Hanks. I gave this a 5 out of 5 star and I haven't watched it for so long. I feel like everybody watches this as a little Christmas film. I, I, that's not my tradition, I didn't watch it, but um, I did this year and I felt wonderful and magical watching it. Even though I watched it on Boxing Day, so I was a couple of days out of the tradition, so sorry guys. Shame on me. It's about a little boy who goes on this magical train at night on Christmas Eve, the Polar Express, to visit Santa in the North Pole. Is it North Pole or South Pole? One of those, I'm too old, I can't remember. And it's just so such a beautiful magical film as i said perfect for christmas time which is obviously i watched it during that time i found that i kept saying oh how sweet throughout the whole thing it was just so oh worthy it was it's just adorable the music story and animation are all equally wondrous and beautiful perfectly fit together it has just such meaning and magic that i just can't help but love it so that was a great five stars um film for me Next I watched Kiki's Delivery Service, I actually watched it twice, I watched it once on my own and then once with Joe, because um, I don't think he'd seen it before. This is a Studio Ghibli Hayao Miyazaki film, number 5 in the collection. So in this story, when a witch is 13, it's kind of tradition for her to move off to another town on her own to start her witch training. But Kiki finds it very difficult because she's quite a poor flyer, she's quite poor at potions, she kind of hasn't found her niche in the witch community yet, so she decides to start up a delivering service just to kind of earn her keep at a bakery that she's staying at. And it's such a cute film. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I've watched it before, um, but that was so long ago. All the characters in this are so <laughs> strange but lovable. I think my, one of my favourites is Gigi, her little black cat. He's, he's just so funny and Kiki herself is too adorable. I don't know why she was so rude to this boy that's in this. I can't remember his I think it's Tomboy. Tombo? I think his name's Tomboy. I don't know why so, she's so rude to him, just because... Um, he didn't introduce his name to her so she kind of has that grudge throughout the whole thing but the relationship there is just so adorable and cute. Happy tears brimming in my eyes, it's just such a warm and fuzzy cute film to watch. Next I watched the Doctor Who Christmas special on BBC One. I gave it a 1 out of 5 star. It was funny, I'd give it that, but I didn't know what the hell was going on half the time. Um, since Stephen Moffat has taken over the writing it's just gone so dark downhill and it's a shame because all the um, actors as the Doctor since he's uh, started writing have been fabulous but you can just see they're held back by the limitations of a poor story so because you can see that as a viewer it makes you not enjoy it as much because you can see that it's a struggle to, to work with you know so yeah unfortunately that wasn't a very good one for me but I love River in it because River's one of my favourite characters she's just so sassy and amazing then I watched Inside Out by Disney Pixar and this is a present that Joe got me for Christmas and um, this of course was another 5 out of 5 star, another favourite of um, film in 2015. I've already talked about this in another wrap up, so if you just want to kind of sift through my um, film wrap ups that I've done, I haven't done too many so it won't be a chore, uh, check that out if you like because I'll go into a bit more detail and give it kind of more full review within my mini reviews if that makes sense so I'll leave that there. After that I watched Howl's Moving Castle again I've seen this before 
not as long ago as the Kiki delivery surface, but um, still kind of long ago, so it was hazy to my memory of what was happening in it. Um, again, this is another Studio Ghibli collection by Hayao Miyazaki, and it's number seven in the collection. So it follows the story of young Sophie Hatter, a girl destined to lead a dull life as a hat maker. Sophie resigns herself to her fate, but fate has other plans for her. Sophie's life is thrown into turmoil when she is literally swept off her feet by a handsome yet mysterious wizard named Hal. So secretly transformed into a 90 year old woman by the Wicked Witch of the Waste, she embarks on an incredible odyssey to lift the curse and finds refuge in Hal's magical movie castle. And it's based on the book by the Welsh author Diana Wine Jones, which I've got from a charity shop haul recently and I need to read it now. I might eventually do a book to movie adaptation uh, review. If you're interested in that, just let me know. Yeah, this is another much loved film. Gave it a 4 out of 5 star. It has an annoying insta love, but the charm, enticing characters, and simply effective plot kind of just makes up for that. How is, I think, he's one of my favourite characters. He is so dramatic. Hello. About, I don't know, about half an hour ago? <laughs> yeah. Oh, lovely. Oh, can you take a picture if she lets you? Oh, does she have a nice Christmas? Oh, excellent. You can't get me. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> Alright then, excellent. See you later, bye. Bye then. Bye. Yeah, Sophie is cleaning and she messes up his arrangement of hair products and he, he usually has blonde hair and he comes out with ginger hair and he starts sobbing and he turns really emo and he's all like I don't see the point of living if I'm not beautiful and I'm like why man you only dyed your hair ginger it's an easy enough colour to go back blonde surely <laughs> and then it starts turning black and it's just oh so dramatic but it's a great scene it's very funny also very warm and fuzzy to watch um, one of the characters that I really hate is the Witch of the West. I don't know why they put up with her, she really bugs me. But definitely check this out, it's great. I love all of um, Miyazaki's creations and, you know, the, the Ghibli collections and all that, so great stuff. Okay, and then I watched Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None on BBC One. It was split into a three-part drama. I gave that a five out of five stars. And obviously, yeah, it was a BBC uh, drama thriller adaptation for one of Agatha Christie's many mystery thriller novels. I've not really ever watched um, anything in that kind of genre before or read any of Agatha Christie's works but just seeing the trailer and the amazing cast that they were having present the show just really sucked me in and it looked so eerie and creepy I just I really want to watch it. So ten strangers are invited away to the mysterious eerie Devon coast by a UN Owens where they find their time there very unsettling and of course as the title says they are murdered one by one it was very intriguing and i love to see the fear factor rise and then slowly deplete as it got down to the last three the last two and they were like well this is innovatable it's happening it's such a sinister feel and i loved as the murders were happening the background story to why these strangers were invited was really thrilling you got kind of little snippets here and there and how them being there linked to their past. The tone was just super dark and gritty and fit perfectly with the initial pleasantly unaware people of this sort of time period that it was set in. You know, they just kind of hid all their problems and it was nice to see, well, not nice I guess, but it was cool to see the, the dark stuff climbing its way to the surface. I actually really liked how it was split into those three parts. I kind of made it feel episodic, which it's something I really enjoy when it comes to kind of period dramas. I don't know why, I just I prefer that over a, a full feature film or an you know a long show if that makes sense. There were a lot of red herring swimming about and it was just a masterpiece. It was wonderful. I loved how things turn and change. It was so unpredictable. Oh my god, it was amazing. Okay, and then I started watching Dickinson, I think that's how they pronounce it, another thing from BBC. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 so far. I've only watched two episodes. But it's a 20 part series set in 19th century London, following the characters of Charles Dickens as they interact with each other and just live their lives. Doesn't sound very interesting, but it's one of those things that you just kind of watch and sit and kind of think, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if it was like this in that period. It kind of just makes you feel a bit more motivated to read some of Charles Dickens' work. But the reason why it's got kind of a mediocre 
uh, score at the moment is just because, as I said, I've only watched two out of 20 episodes so far, so I don't really have that much of a bearing on it. And also because there were a few painful scenes, especially between Scrooge and the Inspector, by which I mean incredibly slow and boring, zoomed in talking, like nothing was getting anywhere, it was like a slow bite to China pretty much, it was going nowhere fast. But yeah, I do think I'll watch it to the end because, as I said, I like those period pieces, it's quite interesting to me, and um, yeah, hopefully it will motivate me to read some of Charles Dickinson's work. So I finally started something that I got for, I think my birthday two years ago, or Christmas last year or something, and again, it's another BBC production, I'm not sponsored by them, I swear, um, but this is Atlantis, the complete collection. I've been watching series one, The Legend Begins, and I'm on the second disc, but um, I kind of stopped it halfway through, so I think I'm going to just start it from the beginning of that second disc again. I think it's really interesting so far, like, literally I put it on my Christmas list or birthday list, whatever list it was on, because I saw one episode and I was like, oh that's so cool, and then I kept forgetting to watch it, and I thought, you know what, it entertained me in the first episode, I'm probably going to like, you know, it in the long run, so I might as well just ask for it, so I can just watch it back to back. And yeah, I really am enjoying it. The only thing is some of the the mythological aspects because it's set in um, Greek mythology and some of those aspects don't link up with the knowledge that I have about the Greek myth myths and legends so it's a little bit patchy in terms of research I feel but obviously I'm only a couple of episodes in as it were and it might get better so yeah I really do enjoy it actually it's just that little trip up that irritates me a little bit but I can oversee it I think so far I'd probably give that like 3.5 star rating as well okay and then lastly I watched a super cute film again on the BBC and it's Roald Dahl's SEO Trot I gave that a 4 out of 5 star and basically it's about a really shy, cute man, again, awesome cast, um, in love with this very not shy woman that lives in the, like, not flat, they live in a flat, but she lives in the room below him. And he, he, ever since he moved in, he's been in love with her, and it's just so cute. Anyway, she has this tortoise, a little Alfie, and she really wants him to grow, so <laughs> he decides to give her an ancient African origin ritual poem um, that she has to say morning, afternoon and night before meals to make him grow and she feels like it's working, she really does see the growth in Alfie but if you watch the film you know there's something more to it anyway it's super cute, super lovey dovey, again I was saying ah oh, throughout the whole thing I really did enjoy it thought it was amazing cast as I said it was so bright and just vivid to watch I love that it's narrated by James Corden because I do I love him he's so entertaining and it's just so sweet how that little snippet of him narrating fits in perfectly with the main story of SEO Troll I love that it had Dustin Hoffman in it he's um Mr. Megorium from Mr. Megorium's Wandering Poem and I just love him, I think he's such a cute actor and um, so adorable, so yeah, that was a great film. was a little odd, but definitely enjoyable, so that's all for my film and what I've been watching kind of wrap up. Let me know what you've been watching during December, anything festive, Christmassy, what was your favourite film or show, and I shall speak to you next time. Bye!